jockey as a younger kid and that he finished fourth riding a horse in a race. He would be the largest jockey I've ever seen. <laughs> that horse would be lumbering under and just having a tough time. I, I'm, not, I'm not buying that. But remember, they had Yusef Nurkic, who was a first-round pick, and then Jokic was the second-rounder. And I remember doing Denver games where he was coming in as a very young player thinking the second-round pick's even better than the first-round oh, yeah. pick. Yeah. And it's not like Nurkic isn't a good player. Marquise with a block. Beautifully done. Oh, he's crazy talented. Want to make her on the kick out to Bazemore. Baysmore took it to trouble. Campazzo, that was a good double team. Forced him to pick up the dribble. And Devers picked up their aggression defensively. They're more active. And the drive, oh, flip oh, in. Oh. And what a game for Jordan Poole. Okay, we, we talked about the finishing a lot last season, right? That's one thing about his game that he was working on. Getting some more crafty finishes down low. Floaters high off the glass there. That was nifty. So Jordan Poole is 4-4. Four four. He's got 10 points. And we've seen him make a three. We saw him hit the pull-up. We had the floater. And now this is the straight line drive. Well, Hampton was a little indecisive there. He had to switch out. Got the angle on him right away. And then it's just figuring out how to get it over Jermichael Green. Just high off the glass. Nothing you can do as a defender. Hampton off back iron. You see Mike Malone is really experimenting with this Monte Morris and Compazzo kind of, you know, mighty might backcourt. And so for the Warriors and other teams... You know, Berea, you brought it up, Berea and others, Dallas was good with the two smalls. And we're going to see if Denver, you know, features this a bunch. Yeah, that's the thing with smalls like that in the backcourt. Can you stay away from getting exposed defensively? And teams can use their size against you on that side. That's one thing we talked about whenever you would see Cleveland with Colin Sexton and, and, and Darius and the yeah. small that they have in the backcourt. You can struggle defensively. And... Against a team like this that's trying it out, see if you can expose them if you want. Use your size. If you got post game, go down there and, and back them down as far as you can and score over the top. Tell me about Zeke Naji from Arizona, the okay. other first round pick for the Nuggets. Super athletic. Crazy athletic. They'll throw it up to him and he'll roll to the basket. He's got pretty good hands, low post game. The one question mark for him is, is just defensively. The defensive IQ moving his feet, pick and roll defense. So that's where he needs to improve. But he, he is pretty athletic, and he's a really good rebounder, too. So Campazzo hits the three. Smiley Gage is playing with Brad Wanamaker, Jordan Poole, Kent Bazemore. And then Alex Tupon is, is going to get an opportunity as well. And, and we're going to see the Warriors have three players, Sutton, uh, Wesson and Tupon yep. uh, to fill out. And so Alex Tupon is a Frenchman who is also kind of in the running, I think, for the final two-way or roster spot. Pretty good defender, pretty long, and has had his moments in camp so far. Yeah, well-rounded player, an athlete, pretty versatile. Got some good size at that position. But <laughs> Basemore, whether it's Porter or this guy at Hampton, where are the young guys? I can go dribble and attack. I can go to work against these dudes. <laughs> Bays Baseball's got a lot to give. He's showing that in this game. He was anxious to get out here and play too, but you love having those veterans in the locker room, just solid guys that you know what you're going to get from them if you're the coaching staff. Shot the clock at five. Smiley recognized it. Smiley gets down the lane. Nice block by Najee. Told you he's athletic. See how high he got up for that one? So you saw the strips. You had it right on the money for him. You saw the speed. But Wanamaker's got a little Iguodala with that, 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 was, that strike down. I was just thinking that. We've seen him. We saw him strip someone not too long ago. But just the precision you have to have to do that without fouling. Yeah. It's the third time he had one where he knocked it off a guy's leg earlier in the first half. Well, Iguodala was uncanny with oh, that. With his hands. And, Seeing that from Wanamaker. And that's the thing about Wanamaker. He's not the most athletic guy in the world, so sometimes you got to get him before they get all the way up in the air. Smiley Geach, pretty good defense and a better finish by Monte Morris. I like Monte Morris, too. He's another one of those guys that can come off the bench. He's solid, pretty good three-point shooter, can get penetration really well, good decision-maker, pick-and-roll player. They like him in Denver. Monte Morris forced that Aaron pass. Shot clock at eight. We've got an offensive foul off the ball. Baysmore running into Campazzo. Leon Wood said, no, that was on you. 
for initiating the contact. Warrior lead was yeah, as large as 20. It's at four right now. Nuggets have fought all the way back here. They've had the momentum here for a little bit. They're working on both ends of the floor. Gotten a little more aggressive on both ends. They're bringing more energy. Preseason wins and losses mean absolutely nothing. nothing. Just about tuning up. Get it right. Work it out. Naji, he's got that shot. Yeah, he, he's got a little mid-range game to him. He can knock that down. You said without Mason Plumley, the backup minutes to Jokic are kind of wide open for Denver. That's why they signed to Michael Green. Want to make her top Ooh, of the key? See, just, just under control. No problem. I'm good. I can make something happen. Crossover. Wet. Eight points, two assists, solid defense, and running the second unit. Morris gets downhill again. Smooth. Yeah, Monte Morris, three-year, $27 million extension. Just signed this offseason. Perfect backup to Murray. Mike Malone got that call. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it looked like they were influenced. Everybody on the Denver side was throwing up the chicken wing there. With no fans, uh, the officials can hear everything. And we've talked about James Wiseman. He got a, he got the chicken wing out there a little bit. Yeah, that's, no, that's, I think that was a good call. A little embellishment maybe, too. Um, we but. talked about James Wiseman, the Warrior pick. The other draft pick, Nico Mannion, has checked in. There you go. So we're going to get our first look at the other Arizona product here. Yeah, he feels like he's got something to prove. He's a better shooter than he showed at Arizona. But he's got high basketball IQ, really good pick and roll player, pretty good vision. Now, he, he wanted to fill out, so he said he put on, I think it was like 10 to 15 pounds since Arizona. Well, now, so he, that's good. He played with the Italian national team when he was 17 years of age. His father, Pace Mannion, was actually a warrior draft pick. And Nico Mannion speaks fluent Italian. So Wiseman speaks Mandarin, and Nico Mannion speaks Italian. And at the press conference, they both spoke Italian and Chinese. It was unbelievable. Smart guys. It's not easy having a second language. But he was at Steph Curry's Under Armour Select Camp, I think, in 2018, along with James Wiseman. Yeah, that's that's crazy. You think about you're going to Curry's camp, and now your teammates with him. Crazy. Michael Mulder off the bench and right in the bucket as he hits the three. A little ball fake, throw the defender off, knock it down. Kentucky. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's I, where I, he went. I, I, I had to point it out. <laughs> But in terms of three-point shooting, Mulder would be a nice add if he could make this team. Yeah, and, and he's going to get that three-point shooting percentage up from last year. Dozier, nice take to the rim. So Mannion playing with Smilagich. Damian Lee with Tupon, and then Michael Mulder. So Steve Kerr giving everybody an opportunity. Mulder's made one, and how about two? Let it fly. Why not? In the G League, he was 38.6. And well over 300 attempts. No reason to be scared. Do what you do. Get to your game. If you're a shooter, shoot. Shooter, shoot. Warriors signed him to a 10-day and then signed him to a contract to finish uh, off last year. And then the season was paused. But Michael Mulder, you know, the, the game kind of we had a lot of fun with. Remember when Mulder wanted to guard Devin Booker? I do remember Phoenix? that. Oh, my goodness. And they had like eight bodies. And Damian Lee in the three. Okay. So two Back Mulder up. threes and Damian Lee three. And some of the guys off the bench that need to hit triples answer the bell and change in the game. Denver had tied the game. Warriors push it back up five. But, hey, this harkens back to the old Warriors with threes rolling in. Now, apparently we must have nothing but father-son combos tonight, Kalena, because Bull Bull has checked into the game. Manu Bull's son. Hey. So, Pace Mannion's son Nico is in the game. Obviously, Steph and Dell, but new ball son Bull Bull, who actually got to play in the playoffs and had just been a G League player, but joined the Nuggets in the bubble. And there's nothing small about him, but they list him as a small forward. <laughs> That boy is not a small forward. When he does something good, watch the Nuggets bench because they love watching yep. him anytime he does something good. Listen, he. I've seen him do some things. He does, He can do some things that you don't expect a player his size to be able to do. He can handle. I saw him in the bubble shooting off the dribble. He'll shoot threes like his dad. He's fun to watch. He can block shots, obviously. He's got the length. Smiley started the break himself, and that ball is kicked. 
you know, Alan Smilagich, too, th this would be another development year for Smiley. But when you think of these young guys, you're just thrown into the deeper yeah. end of the water here, you know. And anything just and the one thing that Smiley always does, he brings energy. And you have to respect the three-point shot. He was going to go send that home, but Najee met him at the rim. Yeah, he's going to work on finishing at the basket, understanding what he needs to do to finish. Once defenders come over, not just going in there kamikaze style and trying to dunk it every time. you got to be a little more crafty than that. But Coach Kerr talked about Smiley Geese. The, the learning curve is steep with him. And they're trying to do the best they can to help him right, as they get to the rim again on him. But yeah, Campazzo, that was pretty nice. But see, Smiley's drive. He got all the way to the rim. Go the little Kevon Looney pump fit. Yeah. Or the Nikola Jokic little yeah. clever thing. And you got to switch it up sometimes. Yep. I think that's you. You said kamikaze style. Like, the young guys always are going to one speed. Right. This is a change of speed game sometimes. That's the thing. In college, that works. Right? Or wherever else you play, different levels. Once you get to the league, guys are too quick, too fast defensively, too smart, high IQ. They time it so perfectly on the jump. Trying to get to the rim, so you got to outsmart people almost. Now, Vladko Conchar has checked in. Pico Mannion off iron, and Bull Bull with that huge standing reach. There was nothing better when the run TMC era to watch Manute tee up a three <laughs> and, and have the Coliseum just exult as Naji looks pretty impressive in a couple minutes here. Yeah. Offensively, he's, he's really good. And I think he may be able to step into that backup center role for them. But listen, hey, you're in this situation now. It's 97-97 tie game. Oh, Late game Boulder. situation. Boulder is still working. Three, Three threes goals. for Mike Boulder. I mean, hey, you want to impress your coaches and show you can spark off the bench. Yeah. But get some late game experience if yeah. you're these young guys. Absolutely. See if you can get a win. The wins don't matter right now, but it's just the experience you're getting. Travel. Hampton, that was an easy travel. You know, you, you just brought up a great point, Kalena. If it's a 25 point game and it's garbage time, the game can disintegrate. Yeah. When you've got a three point game here and you catch and rail that like Mulder did, that, that's, you know, you're simulating a little tension here for a preseason game. You are, and that was good action. That was a little roll and replace. You get a roll, and then he's coming from the weak side, curling up on that three-point line. His defender reacted a little late, and he was ready. Oh, my goodness. Conchar just knocks over Damian Lee. He's laughing about it. So now we're going to see the full roster here as Caleb Wessum out of Ohio State will check in. Wayne Sutton out of Louisville, just like Damian Lee out of Louisville. So Steve Kerr said everybody will play, and so true to his word here, he's gotten every single warrior into the game. But Dwayne is a hustler, definitely a hustler. Talk about Weston, he's a pretty good low post scorer. Yeah, the one thing with Weston too, though, is they, they think that you know he's a big that has a perimeter shot. You know, think yeah, of he does. Omari Spellman, you know, type. That they, you know, every team wants to have one of those guys as Hampton rims that in. Yeah, he's another good rebounder. Wesson is. He's got pretty adequate playmaking ability. One thing about him, sometimes he can be a little careless with the ball. So just catch it. You got to squeeze it. Make the right decision. Don't just throw it all over the place. But listen, he's got some upside. He's got some potential. Well, the Warriors also too. You know, are we going to have a full G League bubble, or how are they going to do that? Is it right? You know, G yeah. The, the scouting never really stops. Is you think you know, baseball was it? You know, at that time, the D League coming from Old Dominion. Is Damian Lee will get fouled and shoot three free throws. Foul the shooter again, just working off of the screen. Use that defender's momentum against him. Just stop. Go up and shoot it. Let that defender run into you. Now, think of. You know, Damian Lee had been a G League guy, and I think he had his best season last year as an NBA player. Did. But even the Warriors scouting prior, they had found Kendrick Nunn, mm. you know, to the point where Miami snatched him off the Warrior G League team. So, you know, when you watch a Sutton or a Wesson or a Tupon, is that these are guys that, you know, the Warriors have identified that maybe down the road, Boulder is another one of those players. And so I think it's always great to have those guys in training camp and get a feel of who they are and how they work. and just never know down the road. And that's one thing about this organization. The scouting and the player development is, is really good. It's elite. Yeah. And that's a good combination to have, right? Find guys wherever and then develop them. Make them the best that they could possibly be. Now, Nico Mannion, you know, in that shot with Damian Lee as he shoots the third free throw, 
Kevon Looney does not throw out compliments, you know, willy-nilly, right? And so, you know, he was asked in an interview, hey, who's showed up in camp? He talked about Oubre. And then out of the blue said, Nico Mannion looks like he belongs. Like he just, he did not look like he's some rookie that had never played basketball. You know, that, and so that was, I think that was some pretty high praise. Oh, yeah. You know, that Looney noticed, hey, you know what? Nico Mannion looks like he knows what he's doing. He, he's on a mission. He felt like he could have been better in some areas at Arizona, especially with his shooting. But as a pick-and-roll player, a secondary ball handler, high IQ guy, he's got some toughness, too. He's a gritty type player. Wanted to get bigger. Again, I told you he put on some weight there, got a little stronger. So he's working. He's, he's trying to prove himself. And he's impressing his teammates, obviously, already. That was good hustle by Wesson off the Sutton miss three. And good defense by Sutton. Didn't leave his feet. And finally, the foul inside. I tell you, uh, Najee can play a little bit. Well, he had a smaller defender on him. Nico Mania, you saw the rest of the Warriors rush down there. Can't let him expose our guy. Get down there and help. Quick. Tuesday at 7. So Tuesday and Thursday, Mr. Curry will be in Sacramento. And the problem with Steph is he doesn't have help. He doesn't have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, he's... He doesn't enjoy it as a game. It doesn't bring a lot of life to any building he's in. I just want to know, is he rocking the headband the whole season this year, or is that just something he's trying out? I'm going to ask him about that. Well, he it looks did, good. I think it looks great. He's got the new he's got the new haircut or the new hairdo. I think he, he and Damien both have you know, the headbands going. So there's a little family thing going there. So maybe they, maybe he does. But Damien has been at that. Uh, for sure. Yep, he's been doing the headband. It's kind of new for Steph. They're, they're, thicker, they're thicker than they used to be. The headbands are. They used to be super thin. Now they're really thick. It almost it looks a little different. I'll tell you, the, the headband is just the play-by-play guy's dream. <laughs> <laughs> you figure out who's wearing them and who they are all the time. It looks like it's different material, too, like a polyester instead of what it used to be. You're going deep on your headband I'm knowledge. Just, I'm just, I'm all about the accessories, right. baby. You know, some people wear the, the, the armbands, a different thing. A lot of times it's not even... Like utilitarian, it's just about swag and looking good. Remember Allen Iverson, that arm sleeve he wore? That didn't help him any. It was just because it looked good. Two and a half minutes left, and the first Kentucky player ever to mention the word utilitarian <laughs> in an NBA broadcast. So <laughs> I'm giving you full love for that. No, why are you taking shots at our <laughs> education level? You, you know get what? in Kentucky, man. Hey, Notre Dame took a lot of shots at Kentucky today, so it worked out good for him. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> we got championships <laughs> in basketball. What y'all got? I like Wesson finishing that. The Warrior lead is three as they come upon two minutes here. See, the Warriors are in his zone now. They're going to attack the middle probably or try to shoot him out of it. They had Najee in the middle. Do you think you, we will see more zone, not just for the Warriors, but Miami played some zone. For Toronto sure. played some zone. Like, the coaches are getting a little diabolical on some of these zones around the league right now because man-to-man sometimes with that high screen roll running every offense – it's tough to deal with. And part of it is just giving the team a different look, giving yeah. their opponent a different yeah. look. And not a lot of teams go over their zone offense every day in practice, right? right? right. So you throw it at them, catch them off guard, they're not ready for it. Like, how do we attack these? Do we still run our normal stuff, our pick and rolls? That's what the Warriors are trying to do. Mulder changed his mind there. And I like Sutton with that extra effort, getting that rebound. Shot clock at three. Setting down the lane to lay it up and out. Bull, bull, change that. Damian Lee will get to the line with a good extra effort to follow that. So the Warriors pretty scrappy that trip down. They have multiple opportunities. I, I think you brought up something great, Coletta, is that you junk it up with the zone for a minute or two or three or four possessions. A team's not going not to take a timeout and start running a zone offense. No. And then you just switch back to man. So you sprinkle it in at different times. And then also you can hide guys a right. little easier right. in a zone. If you got someone that's getting exposed a little bit defensively, just switch to a zone. More of a team concept. you got to move on a string. The thing about the zone, man, the weak spot, the, the soft spot in the zone is usually the middle. And not always easy to figure out who picks up the middle. So... You got to make sure you go over that. What if, point. what if on the back line of a zone you had a guy with a nine foot standing reach <laughs> and a seven six wingspan? Would, would that be helpful? That would zone? help. That would help. <laughs> it's, uh, James Wiseman. I'm just 
just telling you, standing next to him and talking to him at the press conference, um, <laughs> he's big. He, he made Zaza Pachulia like look small. Uh, he's big. He's big. They needed that size. You cannot teach that size, and he is an athletic big man too. Well, that's you brought up a good point there. Is that Rudy Gobert, DeAndre Jordan, you know, the, the, the super tall guys, there's an athleticism to them, but when you watch Wiseman, he moves like someone who's not 7'1". And that's, yes. You know, and you mentioned Ball Ball will do things that surprise you at that size. Wiseman catches and finishes and kind of runs at a level where you're like, wow, man, he's, he's, he's very fleet of foot for a 7'1 player. He can do all the things that you want a 7'1 player to do, but he, he's also got that mid-range game too now. Oh, no. Composito yeah, just stuck in there. That was a dangerous play that the Warriors averted. Disaster here. Protected the three-point lead with the final minute. Let's stay away from turnovers right now. Under a minute. Hey, man, it's not shy. Turned and fired that three. Composito running it back the other way. Oh, I thought he was going to pull just now. Bull. You, you can see how Compazzo, he plays with kind of a spirit and an energy. Conchar, his second uh, opportunity, and it's down to a one-point game. He just used his size there, bang it down low. It's got to take your time here if you're the Warriors. Get something good. Take as much time off the clock as you can. And Nuggets aren't going to foul. They got enough time here to get a stop and get another possession. Can you run a play for a Damian Lee or a Boulder here? Hey. Mannion all the way to the rim. Finish those. Didn't finish. Oh, he's going to foul one. on the rebound. He is going to want that one back. Really good drive. Just ripped it through. Got all the way to the rim. Just a little too hard off the glass. Just swing it over to him. Had the angle immediately on Capazzo. Recognize it. Rip it through. Good first step. Just got to finish those. That's huge. Now Bowler's at the line. Pressure free throws in the preseason. Got to love it. Oh, rattled that one out. Now, Mannion on that play, that's one where Steph has that softness. You know, the, yeah. the burst and then the softness. Look at Steph. Box out. He's getting the fans into it. The fans are here. Ball, ball misses them both. Misses them both. Look at the Warriors bench up, man. This is important. They want to get a win. Well, Denver needs to foul here. The Warriors are up one. Well, they're not fouling. Now they're fouling. Mulder will flip it up and out, but he was fouled. Yeah, they were trying to get a steal first, and then they were going to foul. So now Mike Malone, his coaching staff, by the way, went full sweatsuits, where Steve Kerr went golf shirts. All the Nuggets coaches went full sweatsuits. As, so. as, as long as you're matching, you can't have someone second that's, out. That's what they said. It's all you, with you, uniformity. Okay. So which game will we wear our sweatsuits to broadcast? That's what I'm trying to figure out. No one is, I, I haven't gotten the memo on that. When, when is that game? <laughs> we're, we're, we're sticking with the no-tie Sunday again. The sooner we get rid of the ties, it be good for everybody. With that. So Mulder, one out of two. And Denver, we're going to simulate the... Late game situation. Designing a three here for right. the win. Yes. Just get a stop if you're the Warriors and get up out of here. Or, yeah, if you're the Nuggets, shoot a three. So it'll come off of a screen. 9.4 left. I say Bobol, just make, just stagger screen for Bobol and let him shoot a three. You know, they, this is a Composo three. I think he's going to be the guy coming coming around the mountain there. He's not the greatest yeah. shooter, though. He's got it now. Final seven seconds. Drop it off to Conkar. There's the three. Rimmed it out, and that will do it for the preseason. And I've always loved Michael Malone. <laughs> that was perfectly done. Yeah, that fist bump for Mike Brown. Like, thank you so much is what he's saying. Uh, the former Warrior assistant did a tremendous job in Denver. The Nuggets are going to be an amazing team. And kind of a super fun game, partner, that for was the really, preseason. Yeah, that was a really fun game. The Warriors got their energy up. They were working defensively, got some fast break points, and then the Nuggets got back into it. They fought back. It wasn't as sloppy as normal preseason games are, but obviously everything is sped up now. They're trying to get it into gear, and you like what you saw really from both teams. And you got to look at James Watson.